Hello, I'm Masahiro Sakurai from Sora Limited. This is a follow-up to our recent announcements about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Without further ado... The legendary vampire hunter from the Castlevania series, Simon Belmont, is finally joining the roster. He's been given a bit of a makeover. His signature item is, of course, his holy whip, the far-flinging vampire killer. It leaves you open to attack, and it's a bit slow, but I think its average reach during normal attacks is longer than any other fighters. He can move the whip freely. His special attacks are very recognizable. The Axe. Cross. Holy Water. And Uppercut. While they may seem simple, they are very powerful. And his final smash is called Grand Cross. Simon's stage is none other than Dracula's Castle. It's the darkest of stages in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. When an attack hits one of the candlesticks, an item will appear. In this stage, bosses from across the Castlevania series will rear their ugly heads. They make Dracula's castle feel true to the world from whence they came. And, when speaking of Castlevania, you can't forget to mention the music. For this stage, we will incorporate 34 music tracks, including new and classic tunes. The Castlevania series is very popular among our music team, and they were excited to work on these arrangements. Once in a blue moon, Simon's immortal rival will appear. Dracula. Reborn every 100 years, he is eternally fated to wage war against descendants of the Belmont clan. Under what conditions will he appear? Time will tell. Now for a brand new assist trophy. Alucard, son of Dracula, will land his steel in battle. He wields the chrysogram, transforms into a bat, and dodges attacks by assuming mist form. He's very similar to his starring role in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Like other assist trophies, he's susceptible to attack and KO as well. Nevertheless, you'll prove to be quite challenging. And we have one more fighter for you. The vampire hunter who starred in classics like Castlevania Rondo of Blood, Richter Belmont, joins the battle. Richter is an echo fighter based on Simon. Though his strength is the same, his look, voice, and animations all set him apart. Besides, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate version of Simon can perform moves derived from Richter in his original games, so it's hard to say who's really echoing who. I hope you'll enjoy them both. Farewell! I'd like to introduce two more Echo Fighters from completely different series while we're on the topic. Please take a look.
Krom and Dark Samus join the battle. You may have seen this coming. Both fighters have been highly requested. They're each slightly different than the fighters they're based on, so pick whoever you enjoy most. As you can see, depending on your settings, you can either display all Echo Fighters separately on the Fighter Select screen or stack them with the fighters they're based on. When stacked, you can switch between them with the press of a button. This time, we plan to reveal the design of every fighter before the game launches. We'll have a few more to announce later, so stay tuned! For stages, we're mainly including returning favorites. Allow me to introduce some of the stages we haven't shown before. We put a lot of effort into enhancing the look of the stages and rebalancing them as well. That said, for stages that originally appeared in the Nintendo 64 game, we prioritized nostalgia, intentionally keeping the classic look. The stage total is turning out to be pretty impressive. Let's compare it to the totals in previous games. Now the total number of stages is, voila, 103. We must be crazy. If we exclude Battlefield, Final Destination, and Big Battlefield, we'd have exactly 100. But take a look at the stage select screen. Every stage can also be transformed into both Battlefield and Omega forms, so the total number of stages is actually more than 300. All of these stages can be played in 8-player battles, and they are all available from the beginning. Additionally, you have the option to turn off stage hazards. When you're looking for a change of pace and don't want to be interrupted by hazards, select this option for a less chaotic experience. Also, the order of the stages matches the order in which they were introduced in the series, just like the fighters. Regarding stages, we have a little surprise. Please take a look. Check that out! While playing, the stage can transform around you. But first, you must select the Stage Morph option. Then, you can pick two stages on the Stage Select menu. Feel free to choose any stages you like and have fun! For the player who wants it all, My Music lets you select specific tracks for each stage, and this feature is making a return. 
Until now, each stage had its own set of music tracks. But this time, the tracks are organized by series instead. For example, as long as you're playing on a stage based on the Legend of Zelda series, you can pick any of the tracks included from that series. Now for the total number of music tracks from stages. This is also ultimate. Oh wow, more than 800 tracks. And if we count other types of music, like menus and fanfare, then there's actually about 900 compositions. If you played them all in a row, without looping or stopping, there's more than 28 hours worth of music. These game franchises are a big part of video game history, and the result is a massive library of memorable music. All of this packed into one game. This, in itself, is extraordinary. Of course, there's a sound test menu as well. For your browsing pleasure, we've sorted all of the tracks by game series. It's like having an album for each series. If a track has no corresponding fighter or stage, or if it's from one title rather than a series, it can be found in the other section. You can create your own playlists too. Sort them in any order you like, anytime, as much as you want. In handheld mode, you can play music while the screen is turned off. It's kind of like using your Nintendo Switch as a music player. A huge variety of music has been collected for the game, and you can sample some of these tracks on the official website. We're planning to add selections basically every week, so please stay tuned. Some of you may have experienced the game already, but I'd still like to show you some things about the multiplayer battle rules. Now the first thing you will select is the rules. If you create your own rule set, you can immediately begin playing with those rules at any time. In addition to time battle and stock battle, stamina battle is now treated as one of the standard smash modes. There's a different feeling of intensity in these battles. This time, stage selection comes before fighter selection. This way, you can pick a fighter based on how well suited they are for the stage. Or let the last battle's loser pick the next stage to even the odds. In Sudden Death, you not only start with 300% damage, but the camera will steadily zoom in. This creates a nice sense of urgency. Chargeable Final Smashes are now a selectable option. During a match, your Final Smash meter will fill, and then, once it's maxed out, you can use a weaker Final Smash. When you apply this option to a match, things can get really flashy. If you're up for a party, please try it out. By the way, no two final smashes will happen simultaneously. There are other additions to the battle modes too. We've added in Squad Strike. It's a 5-on-5 five five or 3-on-3 three three elimination style battle to decide the winner. Each player will use 5 consecutive fighters in one battle, but it might be fun for multiple players to take turns as well. We're also including tourney mode. Choose the number of players and CPU participants, and the game will automatically structure a tournament bracket. Up to 32 players can join the tournament, so it's great for parties too. We're adding a special Smash mode called Smashdown. After a battle in this mode, the previously selected fighters will no longer be available to use in the next battle, so each player must select a different fighter. It definitely pays off to be skilled with multiple fighters. You could also strategically pick a fighter your opponent is good with before they can. 
The new training mode will feature an exclusive stage. We've displayed a grid so it's easy to measure distance and more. You can also display launch distance. The red line predicts your trajectory at 0% damage and the blue line is for 100% damage. The fighter's weight is factored in at the moment of impact. The single player mode in which players battle against a series of fighters will return in the form of classic mode. Each fighter has a set series of stages and opponents they will face. Now, let me introduce you to some new items, Pokémon and Assist Trophies. to base. All of them can be considered special guests, and another powerful one has just arrived.
from the Monster Hunter series, Rathalos swoops in. He appears as a boss, but he can also show up as an assist trophy. Actually, he's the first character to appear as both. Before we go, I'd like us to take a quick look at the main menu. As you can see, there's a mysterious mode here, but we can't talk about that just yet. Also, there's a dashboard on the right side of the screen. This can be accessed at any time by pressing the ZR button. Options and control descriptions are listed here as well. That's all for today's announcement. The entire development team is putting all of their energy into finishing the game, so please be patient until launch day. Thank you so much for watching.